I'm Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, we're going to talk about Hybrid RAID. Now, Hybrid RAID doesn't always go by the name Hybrid RAID. When we're looking for it uh, in the wild, we may see it as a brand name, often on low-end either SMB or consumer-grade storage. could be NAS or SAN or whatever. We often see product names that hint at something being Hybrid RAID. Uh, Drobo brands theirs Beyond RAID. Synology calls theirs SHR. Everyone has a little name and it makes it sound cool. Uh, we have X-RAID from uh, ReadyNAS, for example. But Hybrid RAID is really always the same thing, and it sounds great when you're talking about its benefits. You get better capacity usage. You can mix and match drives of different sizes, and it doesn't matter because you get to use all the capacity or nearly all the capacity instead of only getting the capacity uh, per device of the smallest of the set like we talked about in our video on can you mix and match sizes of drives. This sounds wonderful. It also, when we talk about it in brand names and see it in marketing from these vendors, sounds like they're offering something new and unique. This is not the case. Hybrid RAID is not new. Hybrid RAID goes back to the first days of RAID, to the very earliest systems. In fact, in the late 1990s, during the Microsoft MCSE NT4 era, knowing Hybrid RAID and how it works and how to implement it on Windows was required for the MCSE. Today we talk about it less, but the knowledge should still be out there. The important thing that came from those early days was this is what hybrid rate is, and all you need to know is never ever use it. It's a terrible idea. It remains a terrible idea. So to figure out why it's awful, we need to look at exactly what it is and how it works. Hybrid RAID is simply the leveraging of traditional RAID levels with partitioning. Partitioning is nothing special, it's nothing new, but one of the things that people often forget is that RAID doesn't always use disks as its subset. It's something that looks like a disk, and a partition is a form of disk virtualization, which again, like I always say, we'll cover in another video. But if we put partitions onto a disk, we're able to treat that partition as something to make RAID out of. You can do this in software RAID just to experiment by making a whole bunch of partitions on one disk and applying RAID to it. So you have one physical disk, but you could have 10 partitions and make a RAID 5 stripe across those 10 partitions all on one disk just to see how it works. Horrible idea, but you can do it. And if you do it in a lab, hey, I mean, these things are great for learning. Now, what you do for hybrid RAID is they uh, partition disks so that you have equal sizes across all disks, and then any leftover space is partitioned again with any remaining disks that still have extra space using the smallest uh, common denominator of each of those, and do this over and over again until all disks are used, and then apply whatever RAID level is appropriate for each of those. So you may have, let's just say you have four disks, uh, four of the... Um, all four different sizes with a one, a two, a three, and a four terabyte disk. Well, the first thing it'll do is partition them all with a one terabyte partition, and then put that in RAID 5, giving you three terabytes that you can use. Then of the remaining three disks, they'll make another one terabyte partition, and again, RAID 5, and get another two terabytes that you can use. Then of the remaining two, they have another one terabyte partition on each, put that in RAID 1, and you have another one terabyte that you can use. And we get to, and then only that one final disk with one terabyte left over can't be used. We lose as little as possible. From a capacity standpoint, this is excellent. From a utilization of our disks, from the ability to not match disks exactly, great. The problem is, is that when we actually use those disks, we have all kinds of performance and reliability and uh, uh, con um, competing context problems as everything contends for the same resources at the same time. You may have a file that's stored on the same disks and not know it. You have to, and that, you know, all those rate have to be uh, striped together to make them into, or spanned to make them into uh, a single thing for you to use uh, when you mount it. No matter what, it's terrible because the knowledge isn't available higher up the stack to know where to put files to make them work well. So if you have something that's on that uh, base RAID 5 that's across four disks, it may be really fast. If you have something that's only on that uh, RAID 1 of the last two disks, it might be half as fast for reading. If you have a file that's split between the two, it may try to read off of one array and the other array at the same time, which use the same spindles, and the spindles compete with each other. So you have all kinds of performance problems, and because of the contention, you're creating wear and tear that you don't need, which makes the drives wear out faster. It's just 
it's bad. It's risky from many, many different ways of looking at it. It's risky in a bad use of the drives. It's risky that you can lose data. It's risky that you're, uh, you don't have the knowledge where you need it to know how to keep uh, the data safely apart from itself. Right? You may have too many pieces too close together, and if you have to replace a disk, you may have to rebuild two or three or four arrays all at the same time, all with the disk head having to move around and do all kinds of things. It takes away your ability to predict how your array is going to perform, not just overall, but at any given moment. Testing your array today may yield completely different results than testing it tomorrow because your operations may change, where data is stored may change, uh, all kinds of problems happen. And not knowing if your disks are fast or slow or reliable or dangerous, that, when can you use storage that you know nothing about it? The answer is never. So hybrid RAID has always been available. It's just generally manual and warned against. No enterprise system will ever let you do it. And operating systems, while they won't stop you from doing it with your software RAID, will, warn, will uh, in their documentation, warn you that it's a bad idea and you shouldn't do it. But in low-end systems, especially those meant for consumers and small business, they know that people aren't going to really look into how RAID works. They're not often doing the research that they should. And selling an idea that's widely taught as a terrible, terrible anti-pattern to avoid in IT will sound good on paper and be an easy sell. And of course, once one vendor tries doing this, all the others have to follow suit or they're missing features. Being on feature parity is a really big deal, especially when it's free for them to offer. It's just that they leave it up to you to know never to use it. So that's all hybrid RAID is. There's no magic, there's nothing special, it doesn't circumvent some ideas of RAID, it doesn't change the world, it's not anything we haven't had before, it's just previously we knew not to use it, and now some of that knowledge, that warning has been lost, as RAID is not taught as thoroughly as it used to be. In the 1990s, we expected almost everyone to have a pretty thorough idea of how RAID works across the board. By the mid-2000s, that was not so expected, and by the late 2000s, it's rare to find people who've gone through any amount of RAID training and, and no longer really grok how it works, which is one of the reasons we're doing this video series specifically covering a lot of RAID information. The hybrid RAID preys on that lack of information in certain market segments and needs to be understood that it must be avoided. There really is no production time that you would want to implement hybrid RAID. It's simply too dangerous and too unpredictable. Thanks for joining me here on Sam IT. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and uh, comment below talking about uh, your experiences with hybrid RAID or ask any questions about how we do it. And of course, uh, you can use logical volume management instead of uh, partitions, but it doesn't really change how anything works. The same effect still happens. All right, thanks. And remember, you can sponsor us on Patreon.